How's your week going? You got dragged in, <laughs> barely made it in. <laughs> Some ran in. Um, um, we're gonna. Um, I want to start. Uh, you know, Saturday mornings. Uh, me and Keith, we're gonna we're gonna start praying. Um, and we need to be a praying church. Even if we're not praying for ourselves, we need to be praying. And um, because there's so many things that can be on our heart that we can give to God. And uh, and he desires this. It's amazing. Um, but I want you to think, you know, as you're you know, thinking even of joining us or coming or even putting in prayer requests even maybe we can even do that too if you can't make it um, to start uh, praying for our um, European churches that are under still under heavy attack and and, and things like that and um, some of the pastors these you know they're not experiencing a lot of things but they're shutting them down and um, so there's a lot of confusion, you know, with with no no explanation at all, and um, you know, and, and no numbers to support, you know, uh, pockets, you know, things like that. But but we need to pray for them. We need to pray uh, for our churches in greater grace. And if you don't know who to pray for, there's a whole wall, and just pick somebody in Europe, and um, and let's start praying for these churches and, and these they're amazing men they're amazing men of God um, it's uh, it's incredible so um, thank you for joining thank you for coming and um, we are in John 15 that's so fun I could say we've made it up to 15 I think I looked back. Um, I think we've done over seventy-five messages in the God, in, in the Book of John yeah. since we started this. Seventy-five. That's awesome. So uh, maybe not that many. Maybe right around there, but very close. Yeah. Um, so Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for this evening, for your people that you have called. Um, Call to, uh, call to your kingdom. Save them, deliver them, purchase them, deliver them. Brought them out of uh, a world system, and um, and I love what Cindy said. Even just to get to a little revelation of you, um, areas where you just reveal yourself where you reveal your love and your forgiveness and your gentleness, the kindness, your, your, your mercy, the mercy of God, to think about the mercy that has been given to us instead of judgment. It's just amazing. And that we can grow, Lord, and we are growing. We're growing in grace, and we're growing in you. And um, so bless these thoughts this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. We're uh, John 15 and verse 2. We did one last week. We'll do more than two this week. So 15, 2. And um, this portion here, um, <clears throat> you hear a lot of different teaching on it. And, and sometimes it can bring great confusion. And, and remember, God is not a, the author of any type of confusion. None. So if you're if there's anything confused about it, it's not from God. It's it's coming from another kingdom. So I just I just love going through this and let's see you know what what God says about this because I think it's uh, um, I, I I love this whole portion in John 15. It says, in verse two it says every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth 
more fruit. You know, the key of all of this is um, branches that are in me. And, 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 and that's where we got to realize this. And this whole chapter 15 uh, is not talking about salvation. It's not talking about losing your salvation or gain or what. We can make scripture to it if, if you need that. But there's three main topics here. There's the vine, which was in verse one. There's the branches. And then there's fruit. And, and we must stay there. We must stay in, in, in that with that being the subject because it's when you get away from it you can get very confused and believing and thinking that you can lose your salvation possibly but this doesn't support even that so we can show you that also if you need that but but it's about the vine it's about the branch and it's about fruit and, and we must make sure that we stay there so it's looking Christ is looking for maximum fruit to produce much fruit, to produce maximum fruit. Fruit because we're in him. There's no other, other job of the Holy Spirit within us but to produce fruit. Fruit not for us, fruit for others. The fruit of, the fruit that remains. The fruit that is, uh, that is conforming us to the image of Christ. It's the work of the Holy Spirit within us that produces this fruit. And, um, and it's about the fruit. But there is no fruit if we're not abiding in the vine because we are only a branch. And branches cannot produce fruit by themselves. They must receive the resources from the vine. It's always about the vine. It's always about being in Christ. It's always about being in him. So branch here, remember if it says br the branch and it says every branch in me, that means you're saved because you're in Christ. And either you're in Christ or you're out of Christ. If you're not in Christ, you're not even saved to begin with. It's, it's two, you know. If you're in Christ, your sins are, you will not be judged. If you're out of Christ, you will be judged. You will stand on your own merit, on your own works, on your own what you believe you think did, you did. You will stand before God and give an account. If you're in Christ, we are judged already because of what Christ did upon the cross. There is no judgment to the believer. It's already been put upon Christ. And that's why it's so important to be in Christ. And so many people miss that little word, and, and you know what? When you go through the Bible, look for it. Look for it where it says in me or in Christ. And um, um, Paul did uh, really, really brought that into play in, in the book of Ephesians in the first three chapters. It's like 20 sometimes in Christ, in him, in him, in Christ. So that's laying a foundation of where we must understand that who we are and who we are in and what he has done. So, so uh, again, the, the key is that you may bring forth um, more fruit. Verse three, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So, um, you know, Christ has spoken you know, many words to people. And, um, and and it's wonderful that we can, as sheep, we can hear him speaking because he speaks. The word still speaks. The Bible still speaks. The spirit is speaking. The spirit is speaking to the church. Those who have ears, let him hear what the spirit says. Christ is speaking to us. How would you like a relationship with your uh, uh, your wife or your spouse or, or a friend and never communicate, never communicate. What kind of relationship is that if there is no speaking or communication going back and forth? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I, I think this uh, that we are moving that way. 
because people would rather sit in front of their phones than speak to somebody next to them. Um, but we're, we're meant to communicate. And, and, and Christ spoke. Christ spoke words and, and people got healed. Just by his words, people were healed. Christ says you shall live by every word. How, how can we live by every word if we're not hearing him speak those words to us? And these words are tender and they're precious and, and they're for me and they're promises. And they speak to the emptiness that is within my heart. You know, the word fills so much within our lives. But a lot of times we will go through life and we will have like an emptiness, like loneliness will settle in or even a depression could settle for a little bit. Um, you know, sometimes we feel guilt and these things try to settle in on us. And, and, and God has a word for that. And God gives us promises against that. So he's always delivering, he's always delivering us a, a word. He spoke to the storm. He gave a word to the storm and the storm died. It just died, right? There, just by his word. So these words are important. And he says, you are clean. You are clean through the word that I have spoken. You know, we are, we, we receive the washing uh, of the word of God. We are washed. We are cleansed. Remember when Jesus washed the feet and, and Peter said, you're not going to, you know, if you're going to wash that, you know, you got to wash all of me. And Jesus said this same thing. You are already clean. And a lot of times we, we don't understand we are already clean. We, we, we try to think of ourselves as, boy, I'm a long way for being clean. But that's the word he spoke. He said, you're clean. If we are in Christ, we are clean. It's, it's amazing to, to know that, that we are clean. Um, but he washed, he washed all of their feet and he told them all that they were clean in, in John 13, right? We talked about that not too long ago. We are clean. The word makes us clean. You know, a lot of times we try to clean ourselves and that becomes a problem. When we try to clean ourselves, we make ourselves more dirty. Yeah. We, we, we come out very disappointed. We're disappointed with the results of trying to even do good, trying to act right and be, you know, because we can't clean ourselves. Amen. He, the word makes us clean. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think about this a lot. You know, when we were in the rehab last night and there's a lot of people striving to be clean or good or trying to get right with God with their lives because they feel they've disappointed him so long. And, you know, but they want a quick, quick turnaround. And, um, you know, God could give you everything here, but but he's, it seems like he he puts it out in little little meals, you know, little little settings, you know, because. Little settings allows you to stay hungry and keep coming back. Mm -hmm. If you're fed all at once, you're going to gorge it down and you're just going to sit there, you know, with no, with no other, nothing else to satisfy you. Um, so it, it's amazing how, the you know, you know, and I'm not saying God cannot heal or touch you in a moment because he does. But most of the time he puts you through a process of learning and growing and desiring this word of God, because this whole chapter is what? About abiding. It's about continuing. It's about going on with God. It, it, it's about remaining, you know, remaining with Christ. Uh, because like Peter said, where, where else can we go? You have the words to life and those words wash us. Those words cleanse us. And this is why we are clean through that word. And not words, not words that are, uh, you know, there's, there's many words that are spoken and there's many philosophies and many religions, but he says, you're clean through the words that I have spoken. And, and there's this emphasis on the, the written word and the eternal word and, you know, the word that came down from heaven. Um, and, um, and that word washes us and it makes us clean. 
Verse 4, abide in me and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. So there's our source. And it's in the vine. And it's that word abide again. As a matter of fact, over the next five or six verses, you're going to see this word over and over. It's like eight or nine times. All packed right in here about abiding in the vine. And we are to abide in him, to remain in him, to continue in him. Because there's great joy of doing that. You know, it seems like every time we get away, you know, we, we're, we're, we're like a being detached from, from what feeds us. And, and many go through this, but, but there's so much comfort in abiding and continuing and remaining because then this becomes our communion. And our communion must be personal. And we must really learn that communion every day is so needed with God. And the enemy wants to get us so busy in whatever we're doing. He wants to tear our house upside down, literally, right? <laughs> I mean, destroy, you know, because our whole focus is on who's going to put it back together. You know, when's it going to get back to normal? And, uh, and with Christ, there is not, none of that because it's always new. But communion becomes very intimate and very personal and, um, and because we are in the vine, he promises us to feed us each and every day and to supply and, and take care of all of your needs, you know, because we're, because we're abiding. And, and it's nothing that we're doing. We're just part of Christ. And we learn to even get closer, you know, uh, because it's, I want to be with Christ all the time. And I want to commune all the time. And this word then starts to wash over us. It's, it's washing us. It's, it's cleansing us. Yeah. We're being cleansed because we're walking in the world. We're walking in the things that is, is unclean. So we need that word to keep on cleaning us. But as we abide and we commune, we, we start to grow. We're growing in grace. We're, we're receiving from the, from the Father. My confession becomes open. You know, I'm, my confess. I'm staying. Conf I'm, I'm staying. Conf I'm going to God in confession, Lord. You know, because only God can search my heart. I don't know it, and and, and I, Lord, if there's anything in my heart that is unclean and un you know, wash me, Lord. And it's just being open and honest before Him. It's being humble. It's understanding that I am so weak and I can fall at any time and keep me abiding in the vine. You know, I want to, I want to have, I want to be renewed. I want my mind renewed. I want my thinking restored. I want to think differently today than I did yesterday. I want to think with Christ. I want to know what he has to say. I want to hear his word today to me. And he promises to do that. I need a word of God today. I need to be in the Bible today. I, 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 need a, I need a promise today. Yesterday's manna was wonderful, but it doesn't, it doesn't last today. That was yesterday. So I need something new again. To, and he is so faithful because I'm abiding in the vine. He knows the need. He knows the need. As many as they are, he knows them. And he'll address them. According to his will, not my will, Lord, your will. And, and that really takes me away out of my flesh when I'm when I'm honest and saying not my will. Really? You really want my will? Or are you just saying that because it's in the Bible? Because if you really want my will, let's start, let's bring in a cross in your life right now. Let's, let's see where that takes us. And let's just start there. That's, 
That's, that's your provision for today. And you've got my grace, which is sufficient. So don't say it's too much. I'll never give you more than what you can, not, when you can't bear. And I'll be with you in this. You know, I, but it's just being honest before God. And, and this, this becomes part of this washing. This becomes part of this abiding and this communion. And then I learned to guard my heart, which is, which is being attacked from all angles in every area. Satan knows if he, can, if he can get our heart, he has the majority of you. Because out of the heart, the mouth will start to speak. And you ever say, wow, why, why did I say that? And then a couple of minutes later, you go, again. I mean, I just, you know, was just corrected on that. I mean, our, our tongue just loves to flap, you know. And not knowing that, boy, we can, we can really do damage with it. We can hurt people. And they might not think, they might not say they're hard. They might say, oh, well, everything's good. We're good. As they walk away and say, jerk. You know? but, but it's true. I mean, we, we can hurt, our flesh can hurt easily. The spirit man cannot be offended. Psalm 119 once again, but the flesh can really be wounded. And we don't want even that to take place. So we, we have to guard our hearts. We have to guard it from everything that's coming in. There's going to be a lot of deception in the last days. The world's going to be filled with it. And people are going to easily be deceived. What, what is happening in our world at every moment could be a form of deception without even knowing it. It's something to think about. You know, so we we stay in the vine. We continue to be abiding in the vine. Um, verse five. So I really covered that, I think, with this. Um, I am the vine. Am I in five or four? Did I do this? I am I am the vine, you are the branches. Just to make sure who's who, right? You're, you're not on the throne. He is, right? Okay, just making sure. You're just a branch. You're just a branch. And, um, and he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. And I love that. For without me, you can do nothing. Wow. What a humbling, humbling verse to those who think they are something or think they've got an amazing gift you know uh, I got I'm, I operate in all seven fold get, yeah, minute you know just just a, just a lofty statement of arrogance and pride you know and um, because we can do nothing we can do nothing. We need, we need our Lord and Savior every moment, every every hour. You know, once we know that we are nothing, then we start to hear the still small voice from the Spirit. Then we can respond because now we're living in faith obedience. And love starts to get poured in my heart. And, and what does that love do? That love gives me a call for the nations. That love gives me a call for the lost, gives me a call for this city, gives me a call for my family, gives me a call for the neighborhoods. You know, hey, you want, you know, anybody, wherever you're at, I mean, we're, we're down in court, anywhere you want to go. If you're, if God is leading me to this area, let's go. We'll hit it. We'll hit the streets there. We don't care. doesn't matter where. The message needs to be preached. But you... You need, we need, we need to be abiding in the vine to get, uh, you know, to get a vision for, for, for people. And, and we need boldness to preach to them. And we need them to have open hearts for they can receive. And this is going to become our prayer. 
Because God wants to use us to reach the lost. And, and we know it, it, it's by the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's only through Christ. It's only through him. It's only about when we abide. It's only when we abide. And I, and I love that. You know, you'll bring forth again, and there's that much fruit again. Because we're in him. The purpose of the branch is to bring forth fruit in Christ. And, and I think of, I think of um, Mark chapter 4 and Luke chapter 8, the sowing of the seed, right? Just in sowing the seed, it's not talking about reaping here. It's just talking about sowing. You know, there are some that are going to reap. It might not be you. You might just be called to sow. But the sower and the reaper, there's no difference in God's eyes. Because you need, to, to be able to reap, you need somebody to sow. You know, we wonder why we don't reap because there's no sowing. <laughs> you have to sow first. The seed has to be thrown before something sprouts. Before something comes up, you need to sow. And, and when you sow, there also has to be death, which is another story. Unless the seed falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Before something can happen, something must die. There must be death in our lives for something to be produced. For fruit to produce, we need death. And you know, uh, know that we just sometimes would also just need to let it die. Stop raising it up. You're like, you think you're Jesus. You're going around raising your own flesh up all the time. Come forth. Ken, come forth again. You know, no, let it die. Let it die. Let it die. Let it die. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Apart from me, you can do nothing. What are we trying to do as the church? What are we trying to do as the body of Christ? Hopefully, hopefully Christ is involved. Hopefully he's part of this. Because if not, we're just, a, we're just another glorious organization trying to do something. But it's, it's not about winning souls and making disciples and investing in people's lives and dealing with people who, who are you know, in the streets and hurt and wounded and things like that. You know, we, we should be able to start to see what God is doing in the lives of people and individuals. And, and if you don't, just ask him. He'll show you. Verse 6, if a man abide not in me, and, 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 and you know, this verse they, they use all over the place saying you can lose your salvation. So we can address that again if you want. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So, first of all, this person is not saved. Why? You're not in Christ. You're not in Christ. And if you're not in Christ, you will be judged. And, and it will be hopeless because you've not trusted in the Savior. You've not trusted in Jesus Christ to save you and you're going to try to save yourself. You'll be cut off as, a, as, as this so to speak. So, but anyway, this is not even talking about salvation. This is not even talking about salvation. It's talking about bearing fruit. That's what, that's the whole topic. And, and they want to bring in that this is a salvation thing and you can lose your salvation. That's not the subject. N nowhere here does it talk about salvation. It's talking about fruit bearing. And fruit bearing is the result of salvation. Bearing fruit is the result of being saved. The, the product of salvation is fruit. It's what is brought forth from your salvation. The spirit within you, the spirit within you 
the fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5 22 is what is 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 what wants to be produced here it's the love the joy the peace the long suffering the patience the gentleness the kindness that's the fruit that's what we're talking about here producing fruit and apart from Christ there is going to be no fruit none yeah. there's no fruit and, and and you know if you abide in Christ you will produce fruit there will be a time it will happen and it will be, be visible mm. so the fruit is the life of the believer that's fruit it's the life of the believer it's what Christ is doing within you what do you want him to do in you? You want him to deal with your husband or your wife? Is that what you want? Or, you know, we, we want fruit. <laughs> we want fruit. Um, this, this is also a good, uh, uh, another verse, you know, it says, uh, you know, men will gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Turn in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll close here. Because it's almost the exact same story. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Starting in verse 11. First Corinthians 3, 11. For other foundations can no man lay than that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build on this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. Look at verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifested, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. For the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So this fire of those that are not abiding him that are going to, the branch that's going to be thrown in is, I think it's talking about the believer's works. You know, the wood, hay, and stubble that gets burned. That gets burned and consumed. You know, and, and it's, you know, people want to relate this and say this is, this is a person getting thrown into hell. I think it's his works that are being being tried by the fire. Look at 14. If any man, if any man's works abide, so you there's one there, there's there's works that are going to abide, and the works aren't of you. The works are because you are abiding in the vine, because apart from him you can do nothing. So if any man's work abide which he has built upon, he shall receive a reward. So this is talking about rewards. Rewards that we will receive because we put our trust in Christ. It's how we apply what Christ has freely given us. Are we abiding in the vine? If it, Look at 15. If any man's work is burned, so you got two man's works. One's, one is abiding and one's going to receive a reward. And the other work is going to be burned. And he's going to suffer loss. One's going to receive a reward. One's going to say you received the loss. But look at the last part. But he himself will be saved. So here again, not talking about salvation. It's talking about your works. What have you done in Christ? You guys get that? Okay. So he himself are going to be saved yet so as by fire. So you've got, you've got some of our works. Some people are going to say, you know, that they're doing all this for Christ, but they weren't abiding in the vine. They did it in their own, or, or they could have been abiding in the vine themselves, but they did the work out of their own flesh. A lot of people want to do things to get a pat on the back, to be acknowledged, to be recognized. And 
Christ is going to burn it up. It has nothing to do with Christ working through you. You're not abiding in the vine. There's no fruit. It's flesh. You know, the flesh can partake of the tree of good and produce good things. And they still might not be of God. You can do a lot of good things, but for your own recognition. Yes. They're not of Christ. Many people do great and wonderful things. They're not saved. Many people give thousands and millions of dollars to charity. They're not saved. Are you doing them in Christ? Or are you doing them for yourself? So the ones that you're doing for yourself will be burned up. But you yourself will be saved. Those that are abiding in the vine and fruit is being produced because apart from him, we can do nothing. Those are rewards that are, or those are works that are going to be rewarded by Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. So this is not about salvation, of losing your salvation, of being a branch that is cut off and thrown into the fire. That's not you. That's your works. That's dead works. It's like a dead limb. The only thing it's good for is throw it into the fire. There's nothing else that it's for. But those are works. Dead works. And we want our works to glorify Christ. And that happens when we abide in the vine. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this word this evening. And... Um, and, and, you know, out of all of this, we know that you're doing a mighty, mighty work within our lives. You're doing a great work within our lives, within our hearts, Lord. And we just thank you. We thank you for your great grace, for your mercy, Lord, for the things that you're doing in our marriages, in our relationships, in our families, in our churches in our neighborhoods, God. Stay close to the vine. Stay close to Christ. We thank you, Lord. We just praise you. We bless you. Uh, in Jesus' name. And uh, bless the offering. Um, those that can give, we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.